right. <clears throat> Welcome to the October 9th full board meeting. We have just concluded the finance and governance meetings. We are so pleased to have a full house today um, with some of our folks and board members who we don't often get to see in person. So yay, us. Um, Sarah, we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. Um, and for the record, I'll just note who's here, Madam Chair. We have Lisa Gomez, our board chair, Jerry Romsky, our vice chair, uh, Beryl Snyder, our secretary. Joining us from Buffalo is Janice McKinney, uh, Kent Severud, uh, Wellington Chen are all here in Albany, or excuse me, in New York. I'm used to being in Albany myself. I'm in New York today. And in Albany, it is Christina Coughlin, uh, Adrian Swazerski, and uh, Ken Evans. Um, and absent today are Al Carney and Joan Sullivan. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. So uh, some housekeeping orders of business. Behind tab one are the minutes. Could I have a motion to approve? Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Janice. Uh, seconded by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? No. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Tab two, Jerry, you want to summarize the finance committee Certainly. report for us? Uh, finance met. This morning, um, we adopted the meeting minutes from the uh, September meeting of finance. We then uh, went on to discuss a change in our um, uh, protocols. And after some discussion, um, we recommend that that be approved at today's board meeting. And unless anyone has any questions or concerns, that'll conclude my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Beryl on the governance committee. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, and a fine committee it was. <laughs> it was a fine committee, very efficient, as always, might I say, as any meeting is uh, of DASNY. Uh, so behind tab three is the corporate governance report. Um, and after approving the minutes from the July uh, meeting, the committee undertook the annual review of certain items as required. At its meeting today, Governance Committee reviewed the govern Governance Committee Charter and Governance Principles. There were no changes recommended for either of these documents. The review of these items is complete and no full board action is required. There are two other documents reviewed by the committee which were full board approval is required. Um, the second document that must be reviewed and approved by the full board is the disposition of real property guidelines. Committee has recommended approval in the current form and the full board needs to adopt the resolution. Chair Gomez. Thank you. May, um, does anybody have any questions on, on what we're presented? No, okay. Could I have a motion for a resolution to approve the disposition of property guidelines? Wellington, thank you. Second. Anybody? Second. 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 Thank you, Ken. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? No. Motion carries. Uh, the final, I believe, um, item here is uh, mission, uh, the mission. Pub the public law section 2824-A requires DASNY's mission statement and performance metrics to quantify performance goals must be reviewed and approved annually by the board. The committee reviewed the mission statement, including the metrics to quantify performance goals and measurements at its meeting earlier this morning, and no changes were recommended. This time, the committee has recommended approval in its current form, and the full board must adopt the resolution. Chair Gomez. Thank you. Uh, unless anybody has any questions, may I have a motion to approve the mission statement performance metrics and including, um, sorry, I mean, including the performance. Metrics. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Wellington. Thank you, Janice. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? No. Any abstentions? No. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. I think now I will turn it over to Robert for the president's Excellent. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, just to give a brief update in your packets, you'll see the 2025 board meeting schedule. We encourage everyone to look at those dates. Please advise us of any uh, conflicts or potential conflicts, and we can take that into consideration. Um, employee and board engagement. Uh, just a number of things to note in that front. Uh, we had um, a, a month ago, uh, 400 DASNY employees come together as part of our uh, uh, company-wide uh, engagement activities at Bethlehem Park. Uh, we had folks come up from the New York office and actually from uh, some of our other regions, including Buffalo and, and Rochester, uh, to our participate in that. It was the first gathering that we've had uh, really since before COVID. And I think it went uh, a long way um, towards, um, you know, building up morale, uh, helping people to uh, reintroduce themselves across the different departments and divisions um, and really um, reconnect with the organization in a way that they have not in the past. Steve did a fantastic job presenting um, on the variety of, of different projects that we had uh, and be able to speak a little bit as we enter into our 80th year of public service um, uh, to, to speak about the different activities that we have. We were all well, also successful in raising $2,000 for a nonprofit where Angels Play that uh, provides uh, money for uh, playground renovations uh, in memory of, uh, of Charlie Fernandez, the daughter of a DASNY employee, uh, Jason Fernandez. So we're very excited about that. And, uh, and, and shortly on its heels of that, we're doing a similar engagement activity for the board. So we are excited to have great participation uh, in that activity today, and uh, it will give us an opportunity to uh, get to know each other better, but uh, most importantly, to be responsive to the feedback that we got from the board last year uh, about making um, uh, an opportunity for folks to uh, have the same base of knowledge, interact, engage, um, and uh, get a better understanding for uh, the DASNY organization and many of the different divisions and Manage direct, managing directors here in the in the operations uh, separately. So we look forward to that activity. I want to be clear, there will be no business conducted uh, at that, but uh, we will be providing information for informational purposes. Um, the annual report, uh, we are very pleased to present that as part of our responsibilities and the governance guidelines that were presented. Uh, we It is one of those things that uh, we are uh, 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 required to do and are, are uh, proud to do that uh, today. So uh, it, it comes in conjunction with the information that we already make available to the authorities budget office in June and highlights the various accomplishments that have been supported by the board and by our staff. Um, so at the end of the last fiscal year, DASNY delivered $7.2 billion worth of bonds for public projects, more than $800 million for independent private clients, processed more than 2,500 grants with nearly 800 grant disbursement agreements valued at uh, over $200 million. And nearly 1,000 construction projects are in process valued at $12 billion. Those are the highlights, uh, but uh, there's certainly much more information in, in the annual report uh, along those lines. Uh, we want to also uh, recognize the work that's happening out of our grants division with respect to our child care grant. Um, in September, the governor announced $50 million in awards to support 5,500 child care uh, seats at child care facilities DASNY, DASNY had administered that grant program, which benefits all families. Uh, and we were able to do that in conjunction with our partner uh, at OCFS. Um, we also presented um, DASNY. We're, we're getting back out and into the marketplace. So we had a number of different presentations uh, that I was able to conduct with DASNY staff at uh, ACEC and at the Building Congress. Uh, and I think uh, in both of those instances, I want to recognize the team members that uh, helped participate there. Oh, I cannot be remiss. We also went to the New York Municipal Investors Conference with Portia and her team uh, at Bank of America. Uh, so uh, at that one, we talked about our role as a conduit issuer uh, and discussing the meetings and challenges and opportunities facing uh, our communities as we work to build a more resilient and inclusive economy. It was great to be uh, there uh, as we were also in the market and uh, we're, we're able to connect with them about uh, the level of investor engagement and ensure that uh, we um, continue the dialogue with our investment community. Uh, and then in September, uh, ACEC, I want to recognize for their fall conference, we had members of the engineer of the construction team 
uh, speak about, uh, uh, participate on a panel uh, with collaborative success engineering and the future of capital projects, where I, along with some of the other uh, uh, directors and commissioners spoke about the variety of state opportunities that exist uh, there. And I wanna thank specifically our um, director of upstate design and construction, Molly Larkin, and our chief project manager, Sal Renda, uh, for uh, supporting me in, in, in that work and at that panel. And then I, I mentioned that we were at the building uh, conference to talk about uh, various project delivery methods utilized in DASNY projects. I wanna recognize the, the folks who supported me and presented there as well. That would be the managing direct, senior director of construction, Mike Stabulus, and the director of procurement, Kara Mallard, and the director of opportunity programs, Carrie Torres. Um, as we, we all will recall last month, we had a number of different authorizations for a variety of transactions. Um, Portia will certainly outline those in detail, but I will highlight uh, just a few. NYU Langone um, priced $121 million uh, of, and Goldman Sachs was the lead book runner. This was a refunding. It uh, received considerable interest and we were, able, we were oversubscribed uh, and able to um, price those bonds with a 12-year maturity at a TIC of 2.84, resulting in significant savings for NYU. Uh, Northwell is uh, a significant transaction over a billion dollars that is um, priced with similar levels of interest over subscription, um, and that deal will be closing shortly, potentially today or tomorrow. It is in process. The same uh, is, is, uh, is in the works for Columbia. So the team in public, in public finance has been particularly busy these past few weeks, and we still have a few more in the pipeline in an effort to uh, meet our uh, private clients' uh, goals and objectives. Also, I will be turning it over shortly um, to uh, Portia to um, secure the uh, authorization and the update to our board financing policy. Um, I don't think we have anything more to note in terms of media coverage at this point. Uh, we received some coverage with respect to the work that we have happening in the courthouse renovations in Portland. Um, completion of $106 million health sciences facilities for St. John's and a grant for a playground in Austin, among, among other requests. Also for your review is the uh, seeker report. Uh, as part of my report, as well as our monthly grants report uh, as part of our report. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Portia to, uh, uh, to move uh, the resolution. Thank you so much. Before the members for consideration is a board financing authorization policy. As we discussed in the finance committee, we're looking for um, amendments to that policy to expand out uh, the categories of clients that are eligible for single approval by the board to include higher education and healthcare borrowers that are currently in our portfolio then are in the triple B rating category, as well as existing borrowers in our portfolio that have what I would call programmatic credits like GOCs um, and libraries, and also to include private placements. Um, this was approved at the finance committee. Do we have any questions on what was presented or, or Portia's recap? Okay, could I have a motion to approve, please? Thank I'll you, move. Beryl. Any seconds? Thank you, Wellington. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think this is great. Uh, any opposed? No. Any abstentions? No. Motion carries. Okay. And in keeping with Portia, do you want to take us through the public finance report? Sure. Robert talked about all the financing that we've been in the market with recently, so I really never have anything to add in addition. I just the highlight. This time, but to Robert's point, it, it has been busy. It's been really busy, as you know. We had a really big agenda in September. Folks are anxious to get to the market before the election, so. Um, we're off to a good start with NYU Langone, Northwell, and Columbia um, in the market last week and the week before, all three of which are closing this week. Um, so we'll have another update for you come October, and hopefully everything will have uh, moved accordingly. Um, brief market update. 
Uh, total year-to-date new issuance volume for 2024 is approximately two, uh, approximately 420.6 billion. That's up approximately 34.3%, 34.3% is a big number, um, from last year's comparable volume. Um, you know, volume levels weekly have been very high, again, with everybody trying to get into the market for the election. You know, last week, the supply was about 12.1 billion. Um, this week, we're looking at 10.3 billion. Uh, municipal bond funds saw inflows last week as well as the prior week. Uh, we've seen municipal bond funds experience now for the 14th consecutive week of inflows, so a lot of money to put to work. Um, taxes and bond yields increased across the curve on Tuesday, with two year and 30 year AAA and we increasing by five basis points, 2.72%, and 30 year to 3.65%. U.S. government bond yields increased as well, with the 10-year Treasury increasing by one basis point to 4.04%, and the 30-year increasing by two basis points to 4.32%. Um, since the September 11th board meeting, one-year MMG has increased by 25 basis points, 10-year by nine basis points, 30-year by 13 basis points during that same time period. 10-year uh, Treasury yields have increased by 39 basis points, and 30-year increased by 30 five basis points. Um, I wanted to just bring the board um, up to date on a couple of other matters. Uh, I wanted to let you know that Garnet Health, which was um, formerly known as Orange Regional Medical Center, um, one of our healthcare clients was downgraded by S&P from double B to double B minus. Um, basically, S&P noted their thin, unrestricted reserves, weak and guaranteed and effective operating losses. Uh, Moody's also downgraded Icon School of Medicine from BAA1 to BAA3, uh, largely as a result of um, thinning liquidity. And uh, that concludes my report. Okay. Um, then we will move to the financial report with another live in person presentation <laughs> from Kim Ellis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as highlighted in the standing financial report, personnel expenses are slightly ahead of projection, primarily due to increased salaries as a result of the Mancon performance advances and longevity, longevity awards that were not included in the adopted budget, as well as hiring efforts and in addition to increased health insurance due to higher participation rates. Uh, Non-personnel expenses are slightly under projection by $200,000. There was no closing activity during the month of August, so year-to-date financing fees remained at $500,000. And the percentage of direct hours charged to our public client programs is slightly down from July at 95.8%, but remains slightly over the budgeted amount of 947 for the year. Uh, following up from the last meeting, uh, KPMG did wrap up its audit of the 12 individual financial statements and issued their clean opinion on the 13th. Um, as far as the procurement for auditors, uh, staff is wrapping up review of proposals and going through the diligence process in, in anticipation of making a recommendation to the audit committee in November. Um, unless there's any questions, that concludes the report. Mm -hmm. Do we typically budget in uh, annual increases in our personnel? I imagine that's our biggest expense. We do. We um, do the cost of living. We did the COLA but we did not budget in the uh, performance advances this past year. Yep. I imagine the, the longevity, like that's a knowable thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that might be something worth considering is plopping in a number there, if you know. I, I believe the tenure of, of folks working here is increasing. So theoretically yeah, that will mm -hmm. increase too. I don't know exactly how it works, but it might be worth looking at from a budgeting perspective. Um, okay. Uh, Anybody else want to make trouble and ask some questions? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, great. We have nothing for approval from Kim, so we'll send it over to Steve for the ever exciting construction report. Well, exciting it is, but. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> some statistics from this past month we added seven new projects into the portfolio. Uh, one CUNY project at City College, the value of six million and six OMH projects uh, located at the Capital District, Hutchings, Mohawk Valley and St. Lawrence Psych Centers. 
uh, those six totaled over 40 million. We completed four projects, one for CUNY, one for SUNY, one for OASIS, and one for OMH, all in the most recent reporting period. And the value of those four were 20 million. Um, expenditures year to date, 322 million through August, 2023, 328 million through August, 2024. Just a minor increase in volume of 6 million. Uh, the cover page of the monthly projects report shows a SUNY Albany summer project, it was the Livingston Tower refresh. Uh, this is a 24 story, 440 bed uh, project uh, where we did some selective demo, asbestos abatement, um, installation of interior partition walls, patching and painting, installation of new floor and ceilings. Uh, the project budget was 5.5 million. We had 13 weeks to spend that. Uh, we started and finished on May 13th and August 9th, respectively. Uh, CHA was our design consultant and AOW was our construction general contractor. Uh, at FIT, uh, we have a new milestone schedule pointing to November 11th of 2024. Um, so we just continue. We, we had a fire alarm pretest uh, last week, which um, was not successful. Uh, we're trying to clean up um, the deficiencies and we'll have another pretest scheduled uh, hopefully within the next four weeks. Um, not much more to say about that project. Uh, at New Pulse, we continue with the Mohonk Hall re uh, residence, uh, gut renovation and, and uh, added floor and roof system. Uh, that $49 million project is still on target for July, 2025 completion. And at Binghamton, um, we advertised for a new design build 350 bed dorm project. Uh, it's our first time working back with Binghamton in quite some time. Um, Design build is the delivery method. We're very excited to be uh, a part of that project. Um, on the CUNY front, uh, we're meeting tomorrow with CUNY on their third quarter and fourth quarter forecasts for spend. Um, we are going to introduce a couple new members to that team, uh, Leila Babahani and Mike Sharp. Um, they'll join Mike Stabulous, myself, and Kate Seely Kirk um, on that meeting. Uh, plenty of work still with CUNY, getting lots of new project requests. So status quo there. Uh, nothing really new to report on uh, OMH or OPWDD. Um, the Western New York Children's Project, uh, we met with our general contractor. Uh, we're anticipating um, some, uh, some of the um, deficiencies um, corrected through bulletins um, from our original design consultant. Um, they're scheduled uh, in this month, so we're hoping to see that uh, and be able to price those accordingly. Um, we did uh, contract with, um, for the, for the uh, project down at New Pulse um, with our, uh, our contractor, Prismatic, and um, Hunter Roberts. So that, that contract is now in place. Uh, that happened last week. So we're uh, excited to move that project forward. On the Life Sciences Lab, uh, we received the 30% uh, design, schematic design submission uh, just yesterday. Uh, so we're beginning to take a look at that, do some design review, and begin to look at pricing associated with that project. Just quickly on the administrative side, um, still. Um, grappling with 60 open positions in the construction division. Uh, the PLA for the DOH lab, um, now we're expecting that to come to the board next month. Um, we're hoping for this month, we didn't get all the signatures from the, member, from the members up in uh, Albany. Uh, we anticipate that happening uh, next month at the next board meeting. Um, yeah, that's, that concludes my it was exciting to me. Was it? <laughs> I was very monotone. So I don't <laughs> 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 <laughs>
capability. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Nadine, do you have um, reporting you'd like to tell us? I don't have an official report. I would like to update on litigation, but okay. you know, all the, everything that was reported by the members of the, the executive team, council's office provided support including finances and all the other work that's, that's been um, this, this last month. Just wanted to make that. Great. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss the financial and credit history of a particular corporation, matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation and proposed pending or current litigation. So moved. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Beryl. Okay, we are back. Okay, we are back in ex executive session. Uh, sorry, we are back in main session. While we were in executive set, executive session no decisions were made other than to return to public session next meeting is november 6th uh there'll be an audit committee meeting then as well uh may i have a motion to conclude so moved. thank you kent thank you beryl okay on to the festivities uh we are we are done <laughs>